Today we're going to be talking about both Pokemon investing and collecting. I'm going to talk about how they both, for me, they're both kind of one in the same and they help each other. And if you're newer to the Pokemon scene, maybe 151 brought you in, or it doesn't matter why you're new or you came back after a long time, um, these are going to be some helpful tips for both the investing and the collecting side and how they work together. And then later in the video, we're going to be announcing the 5,000 subscriber uh, giveaway winners, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But first up, um, I just wanted to talk about, um, because we're getting a lot of comments, uh, newer newer collectors and investors, which is great, absolutely great, love to see it, um, happy to have you guys. Um, so I just thought we'd do a little little tip video so you guys can learn from my mistakes over the past few, what I've learned from the past few years, and um, hopefully you guys can start off your collecting and investing journey better um, than I did. So... First off, we'll start with um, when people say Pokemon investing or po Pokey investing. What what is that? And <clears throat> it could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people potentially. But I'll tell you uh, to me what it is. It is buying for the well. You can invest with with raw or like graded singles as well. But for me, it's it's sealed product. Buying sealed product um, at or below MSRP, obviously below preferred and holding it um, and it can be short term there is short term investing but for the most part it's long term i'm talking three plus years three to five to ten to twenty depending on how long you are planning on being in this um, because um and and then reselling that um to make a profit and after once you know what pokemon investing is and then the next question that a lot of people ask is why? Why why would you invest in Pokemon cards versus um, like the stock market gets brought up a lot, uh, crypto, you know, um, real estate, stuff like that. Why? And that's where things start, these lines start to come together between collecting and investing. So for me, I'm super passionate about cards in general, but specifically Pokemon. So... When I first started getting into it, um, I I realized that uh, just ripping product for me was the fastest way to lose money. So um, I started buying sealed product <clears throat> in hopes to um, let that appreciate and so I could grow my collection. So I invest to collect, if that makes sense. I invest to grow my collection. I don't invest to retire off of. I don't, um, I'm not saying it's better than the stock market. I'm not saying it's better than a 401k or real estate or anything. So that's just why I do it. And there's also another aspect um, to it because I am a collector, right? That I enjoy. Um, at first I started investing the sealed product, but then I started collecting it. I enjoy having the booster boxes. I enjoy having the sealed product. Okay, it makes me, so while I'm storing, like I haven't sold any of my sealed product um, currently, but while I have it, I'm getting enjoyment out of it. Um, and so you, you can invest in the stock market and that's totally fine. And, I, and if you want, if you need to do that for whatever reason, do that. But, um, you know, you don't, you don't get any physical um, thing or usually any enjoyment from your stocks. You know, they're just numbers on a screen for the most part. Um, with some exceptions, obviously, um, it can make you feel good to support a company or anyways, but uh, we're talking about Pokemon. So that is what, to me what Pokemon investing is and why I invest. Okay. So um, we're just going to go down this list here. Um, we're going to start with investing and then we're going to get to collecting on the latter part. So these are um, these are kind of my, my tips, my bullet points that I wrote down. Um, this is something that I learned early on is that you want to go mainly for booster boxes. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know, the that's kind of obvious, but if you're newer, don't feel bad. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you, you're just buying, you, you're like, oh, you can make money flipping, essentially holding and flipping Pokemon product. Well, you just start gobbling stuff up left and right. Guilty. I've been there. Um, you want to mainly focus on booster boxes. There are exceptions. We'll talk about that. Um, but for the most part, booster boxes are the most valuable and the the best uh, most appreciating asset, right? Second thing I would say is to diversify within. You want to diversify any investment, 
like on the stock market, you don't want to just load up on one company or whatever. Um, you kind of want to have the same thing with Pokemon, where it's easy to, like right now you could say, um, Evolving Skies is one of the best sets ever, so um, therefore you should only invest in Evolving Skies. Now, <clears throat> that's where I, I do not agree with that. Um, but it, it does tie into the collecting. There's that collecting aspect of me that says, oh, I don't only want to have one set on my shelf or one set, you know, in storage. I, I like having multiple sets and, you know, say, um, say you're investing heavily in like Scarlet Violet, we'll say right now, like Paldea, which I think is a great investment. Um, if that gets a massive reprint, that's going to hit you hard if that's all you have. So... Um, not that that not that that still won't do well long term, but um, one, it's fun. It's fun to get other sets. Okay, it's fun to have investments to root for other sets, to root for other Pokemon. It makes you uh, appreciate other sets and other Pokemon that you wouldn't normally. And that is one thing that I have learned a lot from the investing is um, I'm into cards and sets that I wouldn't normally probably be into f only purely from collecting. There are sets I would have avoided completely. Um, but once you start looking at the the investment side, it, it can change things. So um, diversify for safety, but diversify for fun, um, honestly. And like I said, um, for me, I'm not in this just to make the most possible money of anything ever. Um, like I said, it's invest to collect. That That's where I'm at. So um, this kind of ties into that, uh, the first point, but um, don't get a lot of subpar product. And this was something I suffered with early on. Now, there's not that you can't move um, like tins and um, you know some of those collection boxes and stuff, um, but they're harder to sell. If you just learn earlier on to not get a ton of tins and a ton of stuff like that, because um, what I started doing was I was loading up on some subpar product early on, and then by <laughs> Because I was like, oh, booster boxes are expensive. But then once I started adding up, like, how much I was spending, I was spending, like, you know, however much here, 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 here. And I started adding them up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I could have got booster boxes. What am I doing? So just try and try and go mainly for booster boxes when you can. Um, the This is probably the biggest one that everyone will fail at is just don't open it. Don't. You can't. If you don't have the self-control to not open these booster boxes, then the, you're not going to last in the investing side. Um, and then you should just stick to collecting, but, um, and, and it's very hard. And I will say that for me, I had to get burnt many, many times. I had to lose money opening, ripping, opening, ripping, right. And I saw my money just going away, not getting any of the cards that I wanted. So that way I just got kind of hardened to that. I don't really rip very many packs anymore, um, because of that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, Unfortunately, ripping packs is the fastest way to lose money. There's always exceptions, right? Um, people will have go on runs where they're making money, and it's possible, but it's just statistically, it's not. It's not the best way to do it. So don't open it. That's kind of obvious. Um, another thing that you have to be. This is for any investment, especially like the stock market. If you see prices drop a little, don't freak out and don't just sell. You have to believe in your investment, believe in the set, believe in the Pokemon, um, Pokemon IP, right? It's the most popular and expensive IP ever of all time. So, um, have some faith in that. Um, and if something dips a little, don't, don't be, uh, worried by that. Traditionally, if booster boxes drop, they don't drop for very much or for very long. And they kind of, sometimes they stair step. There's a very stair step effect where they come up, maybe they come down a little, come up, right. And over the long term, it ends up being a pretty, pretty linear, um, uptick. Um, another thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to over invest your money. You don't want to put, um, too much of your assets in strictly Pokemon. Um, it should be, this is how I look at it is it should be kind of a side investment. Um, I don't think if you have only, this is a bad example, but if you have a thousand dollars to your name, if that's all you have. You shouldn't be putting 500 into Pokemon. Um, it should be between one to 5% of your equity, um, if you're looking at it strictly from investing and 5% is getting pretty high. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at. I do believe in it a lot. So I think that some of those higher numbers now that you can do with your money, however you see fit, but that's just my approach to it. Okay. I'm not gonna, um, you know, I'm not gonna take out a 
a uh, a loan against my house, you know, and put like a large amount into Pokemon because that just doesn't work for what I'm doing. But um, so yeah, keep keep the numbers within yourself. Don't overinvest. Um, something that I felt that helped me a lot, um, and it ties into collecting as well for the investing. Like I said, these all tie in. Is I kind of try to when when I can when it makes sense. Is I like to follow this. I call it the rule of three, and it's buying um, three of something. It could be a single card if you really have to have it, or a booster box per se. Um, is one to open, one to keep long term, and one to flip more in the short term. Now this doesn't always work for every set or for every thing, but um, then you you get because opening packs is fun, right? So you get to open the packs. You get to keep one long term. Hopefully, that one that you're keeping long term will be able to sell. Um, you'll be able, excuse me, be able to flip for the one that you opened, or the one that you're flipping more mid term. Hopefully, can make up for that. So um, that seems to me like when I can, I like to follow that rule of three. Um, but that's just me. Then um, I also learned it took me a little bit longer than it should have is. Same thing, kind of how I was buying like subpar product and then I was like, I could get booster boxes. Well, then when I was buying booster boxes, I was like, well, shoot, I could have gotten a case or I could have gotten cases. So cases when possible, cases are king, not required, but aim for cases when possible. Uh, another thing that I uh, is very tied into collecting and investing, but um, I like to, for me, I like to go from a raw card, um, whether I pulled it, whether I bought it, whether I traded for it. Um, if I get a raw copy, that looks really good, and then I can grade that, and I can get a PSA 10, then I can roll that into more sealed product. So, um, and then some of the the lesser copies, maybe if they're not pristine, then I will keep for my binders, for my collection, right? It depends. But, so from raw to PSA 10 to more sealed, um, that's something that I like to do. So that, that's, once again, that's how the collecting ties in. Um, but real, um, real quick, before we go any further, we are going to... Be announcing the three giveaway winners um, I got the uh, video loaded up here we should be able to click this button and should pick uh, three winners and the first one will be for the Japanese 151 booster box the second one will be for the PSA 10 and then the third one will be for the sleeved boosters um, to claim your prize send me a DM on Instagram um, the links are everywhere you can find my Instagram um, and I'll need a screenshot proving that it's your account essentially and then I'll get your shipping information we'll send everything out to you so Without further ado, um, let's just jump into this first winner here. Um, here it goes. Let's see who we got. JV Remo 2511 got the Japanese booster box. Uh, favorite Pokemon is Dragonite, and most valuable card is a Houndour from Paldean Fates. So, very cool. Um, congratulations to you. Reach out to me on Instagram, and I'll get that booster box shipped out for you. Um, we are going to pick the PSA 10 winner now. Here we go. Thank you to everybody who entered, by the way. Uh, Crane Claw Addicts says, wow, 5K, congratulations. Uh, my favorite Pokemon is Charizard, and most expensive is Roaring Moon. So Crane Claw Addicts got the PSA 10 um, of your choice. I'll give you I'll give you something to choose from, right? And it'll be at least $50 value, uh, maybe a little bit more. So Crane Claw Addicts, nice. And then uh, the last winner here will be for the sleeved boosters. Um, we're going to do, I'll do a variety of them for you. Um, so let's see who won that one. This is kind of fun. Let's see. Okay. Um, Master Peer, 1116. Lucario, easily my goat. And Japanese Alt Art Greninja is most expensive card so far. Keep up the good work, my man. Well, there you have it. If you are any one of these winners, um, reach out to me on Instagram, and I will get that your prizes um, shipped out to you as soon as possible. Um, so... Now we're just going to go back to uh, the collecting tips, um, kind of covered investing. The collecting tips are a little simpler, um, but I would start with making some goals for yourself, some goals for your collection, um, whether that's, are you do you want a master set, um, 151, do you want a master set, you know, what do you want, do you want a master set stuff? Um, are you only going to collect graded, or so what does that mean? Are you collecting grades, like only nines, only tens, are you collecting only certain Pokemon? um make some goals for yourself so you kind of have uh, a way to channel like where you want to go to go um the second one which is it's very simple it's said a lot but it's really true is collect what makes you happy okay don't let anyone don't let anyone feel bad 
uh, make you feel bad for collecting something that you know you you think might be silly or stupid for some reason don't let anyone collect what you want okay do do what you want it's your collection okay um sometimes you could get embarrassed or whatever you know just do what you do what you want okay at the end of the day um third thing i would say for collecting is and this can be very hard because uh we are so prone to chasing the money as humans i feel like but don't chase the money don't only want to collect a card because of its monetary value now that being said it's very fun and a lot of the times like why why are we even collecting these cards would we would we be collecting these cards if they had no monetary value see what i'm saying so that's a tough one but i'm saying don't only chase the money because it does feel good to have valuable cards right and that's a lot of the times what makes us want some of the cards we want but don't only chase the money that could be very tough i suffer from that everyone does um next tip bit one of the biggest tips i could give you for collecting as far as like if you want to grow a big collection stay away from graded cards don't touch them don't touch anything graded uh it's never worth it because it's kind of silly i mean like once again i got you can see psa cards back here right all up here i got psa cards i like grading cards right i'm guilty but um if you can get in your mindset of that you don't need graded cards um, you'll save yourself a lot of money and have, be able to have a lot more of a collection. Um, if you like graded and like, that's where you're at, like with, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I do raw and graded and a lot of us do, you know, then there's nothing wrong with graded, but if you can stay away from it and be really smart, um, uh, because you pay such a premium for some of these cards. Um, this list is a little shorter on the collecting side, but next up and this, I kind of touched on this before. Um, don't rip lots of product. If you want to collect, if you're wanting to collect, the most cards and get like the singles and the chase cards that you want don't rip product you're it's a waste it literally is um now that is like the whole that's like the most fun part is pulling that chase card right so i get it i'm with you so do what you like i said do what you want don't make me i'm not trying to make you feel bad if you only want to rip like you only want to have cards that you pulled i understand that as well um but if you're trying to be a little more logical and smart about it don't rip a lot of product um, sometimes like rip some product just to get that itch and then buy the singles that you want. Um, you'll just save yourself more money in the long term, really. And the more you learn that, then your collection can go so much further. And I learned that the hard way. So, so I'm trying to pass this, uh, this on to you guys. Now, the last thing we're almost done here. Sorry, it's a long video. The last thing that I want to talk about for collecting, it's kind of like the don't buy graded thing. Um, but it's collect other languages. Um, I've talked about this before. If you can if you like the artwork of the Magikarp from Paldea and it's like, what, what is it like 120 right now? Like 610 or something. Um, get the Japanese version. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, if you can, once again, that's like, you have to be in the mindset of being okay. Um, because the Japanese Magikarp is like 22, 25 raw or something like that. And like 60 and a 10. So, um, you know, if you can be happy with that, um, there's other languages too. Simplified Chinese is becoming popular now. There's Korean cards. You can get a lot of the alt arts in Korean for a lot cheaper. So, um, if you just want to chase the arts, then just consider other languages. Um, you know, so I, I've been trying to make myself be a little bit better about being okay with that. Because like I said, I, I am the first to admit that I am guilty for, I want the English, I want the PSA 10 and I want it right. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's if that's the only thing that's like getting your collecting, uh, you know, like making you happy with your collecting, then that's fine, right? So at the end of the day, too, collect what you want to, invest what you want to, do how you want. Um, these are just these are just what I've learned from my journey. And if you guys want to use it, cool. If not, no worries. Um, congratulations to the giveaway winners. Like I said, reach out to me and I will get that stuff shipped out to you. No worries. Um, if you're this far in the video. And you're not already subscribed, um, do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button while you're there, leave a comment below, um, let me know what your investing and collecting tips are, what have you learned along your journey, and then also, um, yeah, just a huge thanks to you guys for hitting 5,000 subs, Um, very excited, very appreciative of you guys, I wouldn't be here without you guys, so I hope to do um, more giveaways in the future. And as things keep going, I just I plan on just keep ramping up the giveaways um, because I want to give back to you guys. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully we can keep that going. But a um, little bit of a longer video today, but just wanted to touch on all of that stuff. Just 
do it a little bit different, right? Um, so yeah, that will do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never, it was never a phase. See ya.